giving all we got No, don't slow down, time is running out We are giving all we got It's in our hands, yeah And no one's gonna stop us now It's in our hands And nothing's gonna hold us back We're staying right on track Say it's all in vain, but I won't second that at all Yeah, we're like a rushing train and we don't need a second call The sky is high, but we will reach it The lesson is hard, but we will teach it This world deserves our dedication The moment we live is our own creation Giving all we got It's in our hands It's in our hands Yeah Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah oh, 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 oh It's in our Away to watch this video because every time I watch it, I find it very, I find it very, very inspiring, very powerful. Basically, none of this information is new. You have known all of that, but it still invites us to think. Uh, but there are two messages here to me when I summarize. One, it it basically presents a very vivid picture of all the pressing matters we face together as a people the earth faces. And then the other way, exciting part is an inspiring message, what we can do to make it better. It's in our hands. This is what DSM aims to do, to create brighter living through bright science. So then you may ask, what does that, what does that have to do with um, today's topic? We have this uh, wonderful food and uh, beverage innovation forum, and uh, what does that have to do with hydrocolloids? Well, <laughs> I'll try to explain. Um, it has a lot to do with hydrocolloids. So I will try to focus um, on today's, um, I mean today's uh, presentation, uh, really um, a sharing of my thoughts um, on three topics. One is what hydrocolloids can do. And uh, secondly, why are they relevant? Not just for business, but also for sustainable growth for us, for the Earth. And number three is what DSM can do. What kind of opportunities we have. So we put this title, The Unsung Hero Behind Food and Beverage Innovation. And this is, a, it's very intimidating because not, I'm not a, a scientist or technical person and I face now a room full of scientists and brilliant minds. So these are basically really uh, examples of what hydrocolloids can do. I'm really scratching the surface. We um, use hydrocolloids probably every day. We consume in our daily diet. So they provide the basic functions 
for thickening, gelling, texturing, suspension, protein protection, emulsification, all, some of them are dietary fibers as prebiotics. So I'll give you some samples. These are products that are on the market, launched by brilliant companies like uh, where some of you come from. Uh, one of them, that uh, gold bottle, is actually vodka uh, with gold flakes uh, suspended with gel and gum. And it's, it's a product that one of our distributors brought us, and it's real. So th this, this provides this, as an example, it really gives the suspension of properties, and especially gel and gum. It's a, a new uh, hydrocolloid. Uh, it's quite the youngest of the family, one of the youngest, and it takes very, very little to do the work for suspension, uh, for gelling, and it doesn't really change the texture um, of the product normally. So it can still be a crystal clear product, and it really does a great job at very small dose. It's an up-and-coming hydrocolloid. So here you see this is now affordable nutrition with a great taste, enabled by the protein, protein protection properties of pectin and CMC. So you probably are very familiar with these products. And I'll come back to this topic later for protein protection. This is, some of the hydrocolloids have extremely great heat stability, for example, gel and gum, and you can really do a lot of things, especially for the filling of products. Um, this is uh, some example of uh, encapsulated gels using arginate, uh, arginate or gel and gum. This, these are products in the market. This is something that actually uh, from DSM, uh, it's a patent pending because, you know, we are uh, the biggest uh, company in nutrition. We have the biggest portfolio of uh, vitamins and omega-3 and uh, carotenoids. But very often, this nutrition is hard to formulate. They either have uh, some undesirable sensory profile or they are hard to stabilize in drinks. So this is one example of how you can actually encapsulate those nutrients and then make them into any shape and form you like and suspend in drinks. So these uh, particles, those beads, they look like fruit, but they're not. They're really nutrients uh, encapsulated in uh, hydrocolloids. And these are, for example, also example, this is an example with gel and gum. It's a nutrition created drinkable jelly. It's also in the market. These are some uh, flavor emo emotions stabilized by gum arabic and beta pectin. These are some products that uh, we are actually launching. Um, it's actually taking advantage of the property, a very, very important property of pectin, for example, as a fruit fiber that we actually don't have enough normally in our system. We don't uh, consume enough fiber, and this is an excellent fiber source and the prebiotic. And I will also talk about that later on uh, uh, that particular hydrocolloid. These are, for example, um, basically culinary innovation. Uh, we have uh, some world-renowned uh, chefs that actually utilize hydrocolloids in their cuisine. Um, really, really, like in Barcelona, there is one chef, world famous, and uh, really he has revolutionized uh, uh, cooking uh, in many ways by boldly apply carotenoid, I mean uh, hydrocolloids in his uh, cooking. So basically these are just some examples of um, what um, hydrocolloids can do and because of what, this, what they can do, it makes it so relevant why it is so important for us. Because as the video has shown in the beginning, uh, a lot of data. And, uh, it, it's great for business, we all know. Uh, we, we, we drive, uh, the business drives our um, motivations uh, a lot of times. But um, you can see that basically there are four fundamental uh, issues that, that uh, or opportunities that I see why hydrocolloids are important, uh, relevant. And one, the earth does not have enough resources. And we have seen that. The way it grows, you need 10 Earths to feed ourselves one day. 
Number one. Number two, resources are not equally distributed. There are places that have abundant resources and other places don't. And this can be anything. It can be fruit, it can be, it can be a dairy protein, it can be meat. It, of course, we talk about food and also other things, minerals, etc. And number three, China particularly face a huge challenge. So if we talk about numbers in China, we know that we share about, we are not, don't share, but we have about the same size uh, of our country geographically com comparing to America, but four times the population. And the arable agriculture land, we have 12% in China, and actually shrinking because of urbanization and some land polluted, not suitable for agriculture. And America has 18%. What does that mean? So every square acre or acre or square meter of land in China needs to feed six times the amount of people that America's land feeds. So what does that mean for us? So number four, is that information and technology, information technology, is making everything very transparent. We all know that fundamentally we are human beings, we want a good life. We dream the same dreams. But now Instagram, Facebook, WeChat, is making information transparent instantaneously. He and she have that kind of food, that kind of clothing, I would love to have the same. And the world actually, very, very fortunately, is in a relatively peaceful stage, despite some maybe regional conflicts. But by and large, you see that people in Africa, in Middle East, in China, in the remote corners of China, they want good food. So, we have talked a lot about natural and organic food, and yes, but can we all afford to have natural and organic food? We have gone through that path. Yesterday, somebody asked about GMO. Do we have enough land to feed all these people organically? Let me see, let me say, let me take two more examples. In America, if you, uh, for the longest time, talk about the uh, index of uh, cost of living, they talk about the price of a gallon of milk and the price of a gallon of uh, gas. And then you are multiple and compare to a salary and you see people are doing well or not doing well, or they're doing lousy. But here, they, they can use that kind of uh, index, index because they can. Milk is actually still affordable. Think about here in China, the dairy protein. So now the question is, everybody wants the same. Everybody want, would like to have milk, have 6% protein in their yogurt. So does the 10% of protein go to the, I mean the 90% of protein go to 10% of the population? Is that better? Or let's say 50% of the protein go to 50% of the people? Or is that better? To give the other people a fair chance of getting their nutrition. And, and why ask that? Because who, what functionality is doing the job? Basically, making distribution of resources let's say, more fair, hydrocolloids. You have to stabilize the protein, you have to um, suspend your nutrition, you have to protect your nutri nutrition, and you have to make it possible to transport to the father's corner. So that's just one example. Another example is uh, fruit. Let's talk about fruit. We would love to, I would love to have more nutritious natural fruit, drinks. I would love to have fresh juice made every day. So we see that. Now, China actually is the largest country by total output of citrus fruit. But we import most of our orange juice, probably, and lemon juice, we probably can't even afford. We actually produce, output-wise, 400,000 tons of 
citrus, I mean lemon in China. Everybody is making lemon, cutting lemon into the water, consuming lemon fresh. The rest of lemon, the peel, the skin, the goodness of lemon is largely thrown away. So Argentina versus China, such a tiny country, they have one million of actually lemons output annually. 70% goes into processing, and that allows them to basically supply the words of uh, lemon juice and uh, lemon oil and fragrance and so on. So now, of course it's great to have fresh lemon, fresh juice, a pressed juice and thrown away. But we have seen in the video how much waste actually, third, one third of our food is wasted. What if everybody wants that? Can we afford? 400,000 tons of lemon in China that are all consumed fresh, if you would process and make lemon juice and get the peel and the oil, then you actually would have uh, 20,000 tons of dry peel, which will give you 4,000 tons of pectin, which is the most really natural uh, hydrocolloid and beneficial hydrocolloid. It's crucial for protein stabilization and in richness of your drinks. And in return, it will give you probably 4 million at least uh, tons of um, drinks uh, you could uh, in enrich, make better mouthfeel and better protein stabilization. Um, and, and by the way, when you do drink that juice, orange or apple, and throw away the fiber, you don't necessarily do very good for your body because your body needs 35 grams of uh, dietary fiber every day. And, uh, and pectin, for example, is an excellent dietary fiber, which is under-promoted because we need all for our food, for our processed food. So this is why I'm saying that all these four issues or give us opportunities to innovate, to come closer to our customers, to our consumers, to work closer, come out with solutions. But why hydrocolloids are so relevant for our business and for actually us as people. And uh, so my last um, topic was uh, uh, DSM. Um, a lot of you know DSM as uh, the world's largest uh, vitamins producer. Uh, we have the largest um, um, carotenoid and omega-3 uh, in general, new basic provider of uh, nutrition. Um, and why are we in hydrocolloids? Uh, we are also very strong in uh, enzymes and um, cultures in general, savory products. Why are we in hydrocolloids? Because we really genuinely find that uh, as an example, we, we saw that one billion people consume vitamins every day, but there are still a few billions that probably have never had it because vitamins are very difficult to formulate into drinks, into beverages, or omega-3. We know it's good. It smells. Nobody wants to drink it if you put in the drink. So we feel that hydrocolloids will really build a platform to bring our ingredients closer to our customers and really bring, really contribute to making our nutrition affordable, available, distributable, also protected to the mass of the people. Because that's actually what it's all about, I think. The food innovation we say in Chinese, 民以食为天, the basically food is the God for Chinese people, and for, the, for everybody, actually. So the food and the beverage innovation is really the innovation for the mass, for the people. And that's not just really for business, it's also doing good. So if we talk about opportunities in China, uh, and in this, um, in this region, in this whole region, we know that uh, in the radius of um, 1,000 kilometers, 70% roughly of the world population live here, and the rising middle class, and the, with more awareness of what's good for them. And the opportunity is huge. So sometimes you say, okay, 
China's growth is slowing down. It's now 7% instead of 10 or 11. But does it matter? Think about it. 7% growth in 10 years, you will have another China, another China's GDP in China. That's the size of economy. 7% a year in 10 years, you have another China's GDP in China. So what kind of opportunities? What does it mean? Our processed foods right now is probably after America number two, next year we'll take over. But even if we take over 107 million tons, even if we take over, we are still, we are, don't forget, we are four times the population. So the opportunity is huge, it's huge. So because of that, DSM actually created, we decided to enter into the hydrocolloids business uh, because we find it really so relevant for sustainable growth, sustainable business, sustainable nutrition and food distribution. And we wanted to actually make the head up, headquarters of this business in China. It's actually a business unit based in China, covering the world, supplying the world. Because why? Because we believe you can have a lot of strategies, but one of them has to be really close to the market, to the growth, to the customers, to all the consumers. That's eventually what decide what they want, what they need. So that's why we are here. So we, have our, we are going to have our R&D, our innovation. We're going to have our manufacturing base, our sales, our decision making, access to information, access to market, and process that information and make a decision to be local. This is what we aim to do. So we are really aiming to be close to the fastest growth of, of processed food market with this hydrocolloid business to bring in our whole portfolio of DSM closer to the consumers, to all of you, through you. And um, I also invite all the other companies um, that are in, let's say, um, complementary um, areas. Like yesterday, we talked about uh, flavors with Simrise. I'm sure texture and flavor, a lot of things could do to be done together. I mean, really, we could here in this region be the driving force of food innovation in the next decade. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very inspirational. <laughs> and it's interesting as a food industry, we obviously have a big role to play uh, in uh, food supply going forward, not just uh, for the immediate future. Um, do we have any questions? I thought there'd be lots of questions. <laughs> no? Oh, well, you can save them till the end. If you think of them, please uh, remember them. We can um, uh, bring them up later. Thank you very much. Oh, you okay. just uh, uh, be, uh, we we do. I want to just plug in a commercial because uh, uh, Andre Pectin, uh, where actually I'm uh, the president, uh, is a company that we strategically uh, acquired uh, to become a, a stakeholder, partial stakeholder, and uh, with option rights to increase. It's the only pectin producer in Asia Pacific, and really with the site, with R and D, with technology, raw material source um, to support, and it's really here to aim to serve to be the fastest um, supplier uh, innovator in this marketplace. And I have a few colleagues here, uh, if any questions, any needs, and we aim to really um, work with you guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gong. So our next speaker is our keynote speaker from...